Hi, I'm Ben Olson. Today on Operation Fishing Freedom, we're privileged to be sharing the boat with U.S. Army veteran Sean Brewer. Duty, honor, sacrifice. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson as they honor the stories of true American heroes on a fishing boat. The mission today is Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. South Florida offers some of the best offshore and backcountry fishing in the world. Sean Brewer is a North Florida boy and an avid fisherman. So for Sean and his service dog Gunner, a few days fishing these Southern Florida waters brings a welcome change. Morning, Sean. Morning, Ben. Morning, Gunner. We got a perfect Southwest Florida day to get out there and get after some of these fish. So let's see what we can do here. Yes, sir. Does he like the bait or pelicans or floating things? All of it. All of it, yeah. All that stuff will drive him crazy all day. Yeah. So where'd you grow up, Sean? Uh, I grew up in Live Oak, Florida. Little small town up there in North Florida. Um, we did the horse farm thing for a while. Broke bread, sold horses and whatnot. Uh, did a lot of barrel racing stuff like that, and then uh, I was about eight or nine, uh, we moved to the chicken farm business. And uh, had the chicken farm going for a while. It was a fun time of my life. Are you being sarcastic, Farm? Very sarcastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you uh, ever get used to the smell? You do. It takes you about six months, and then you don't even smell the ammonia part no more. Um, you know, at that point, all your friends you have in school and they never want to come spend the night because the, the smell is just horrible. Uh, besides that, we had hay, had black Angus, uh, mom raised AKC registered American Bulldogs. Uh, so we had the whole farm life thing going on. Did you play sports in school? Did you fish a lot? What, what, was, what uh, did you do for fun? We had a catfish pond on the property on the farm. So we were always, you know, catching catfish and uh, a couple buddies every now and then would go to the river and um, you know, catch bass, more catfish, brim, stuff like that. Um, I did play football. If you ask, ask my dad, I was bred to play football kind of deal. So, you know, I was born holding football. I ended up uh, getting a scholarship uh, to an NAIA school in South Carolina, North Greenville University. And I went up there and played for a season and college wasn't really for me um, and then I joined the military in 2008 and that was one of the things you know, my dad was in the Navy when he was younger and that's one of the things he always told us you know a little saying he had all the time was you know if it don't work out you can just join the military so just one day I you know what I think I'm gonna join the army so about a year out of high school I decided to enlist and uh, I didn't really didn't really tell anybody I, uh, I told my mom, um, we met up at the Dairy Queen parking lot. And we sat there and went inside and got us a blizzard. And uh, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm leaving in two weeks. He's like, oh, where are you going? Uh, up to Fort Knox. She's like, what are you going up there for? I gotta go to boot camp. And um, her eyes kind of teared up and I kind of felt bad. And, uh, she wasn't the happiest person in the world. She was, she got a little upset at first, but um, you know she was always happy for me, always very supportive. So it uh, it worked out. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evan Root Outboards. We at Operation Fishing Freedom are able to share and preserve these veteran stories thanks to our great sponsors. They rely on our YouTube subscriptions. That's where you come in. Please go to YouTube, search Operation Fishing Freedom, and click that subscribe button.
Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is also a nonprofit organization. And while we rely heavily on our sponsors, it's the donations from viewers like you that really make a difference. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. Your donations are tax deductible and no donations too small. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time too. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Recon. Mother Nature's Fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy-duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high-powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsibly. The iDock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. Doing the head-to-head, -head, fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the E-Tech had it. Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to documenting the lives of our military veterans. And your donations allow us to provide education and treatment to our veterans. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. After a year of playing college football, Sean Brewer decided to enlist in the United States Army. Went to the recruiting office in Lake City and uh, joined up. So I leave uh, about a week and a half, you know, after I sign up, fly to Fort Knox, and um, you know, I start basic training there. Now I wasn't really nervous. The the whole reason I believe I wasn't is because growing up with my dad very, very strict person. You know, we grew up kind of a half military style household, up every morning at the same time, same breakfast every morning. You eat some eggs and some bread probably. Maybe a protein shake mixed in there so you can put weight on for football. Um, but, you know, we had, we had already lived that kind of lifestyle. So I wasn't, I wasn't really nervous at all. Um, but there were a lot of kids that we're very nervous during basic training, you know, very shaky, you know, not really knowing what to do, where to go. It's, confusion sets in. Never been yelled at before in their life. Um, I mean, I got a kick out of it watching them try to make it through. But, but uh, when I got out of basic, I showed up to uh, Fort Stewart. Um, but we came down on orders the following year uh, to go to Iraq. That was kind of the drawdown in Iraq. So it wasn't really bad for my first deployment. So that deployment came to an end, and then what? Um, that deployment came to an end. Uh, we, we all came home. Uh, within two weeks, we had lost two more guys to suicide. 22 veterans a day succumb to suicide, losing their personal battle to the invisible wounds of war. Yeah, they always tell you, you know, you got the chaplain. If you need to talk, go to the chaplain. Nobody wants to go talk to the chaplain. 
you know, that's, that's just one of those things. And the, on the combat side of the military, you know, you're, you're taught and bred the whole time. You're good, you're okay, you can walk it off, drink some water, you're fine. You know, so it comes to that point where you're having a, a low point in your life and you feel like, you know, you have to handle it on your own because that's what has been crammed into your head the whole time. And, um, <clears throat> and everybody deals with it differently. You know, some guys can deal with it, some guys can't. Um, some guys deal with it and get through it. It might take them a little bit longer. And, and some guys just give up. That's, that's a sad truth, but that's just the way it is. Upon returning from Iraq, U.S. Army veteran Sean Brewer got married and wasted no time in starting a family. My daughter was born on the 2nd, November 2nd. And uh, the greatest day of my life with her being born. Um, we come home from the doctor uh, November 4th. We get home about lunchtime. My mom's there, her mom's there. We're all you know, kind of getting the apartment situated, crib set up, you know, all the baby stuff that has to be done. Been home about 15 minutes, and uh, my platoon sergeant calls me. And uh, I'm like, hey, what's going on, Smoke? He's like, hey, uh, you know, congratulations. You know, the whole, you know, congratulations spill. He's like, hey, you got a second to talk. Um, I'm like, yeah, he goes, step outside. So I stepped outside. He's like, so, uh, you know, your leave, your maternity leave is going to get cut a little short. So I, I got a total of about three weeks with my kid and then I'm getting on a bird to Afghanistan. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Yance Valor Foundation, and by St. Croix Rods. Damn. Oh, number one. <laughs> oh. Gunner, what do you think? Hey, we're filming. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage and bonus content, follow us on social media and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. What's the difference between good and great? Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Nobody wants to run out of power when they're on the water. There is a better way. Introducing the Charge Marine Power Management Station from PowerPole that does the work of three devices, a traditional battery charger, a charge on the run, and an emergency start system. PowerPole Charge. Recon. Mother Nature's Fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsively. The iDock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. Doing the head-to-head, -head, fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the e -Tech had it. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Illinois, Wisconsin, or Minnesota, 
Log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. Produced in association with the Yance Valor Foundation. During his nine-month deployment to Afghanistan, firefights and the associated anxiety became a daily occurrence for U.S. Army veteran Sean Brewer. Every time you left, you're like, all right, we're going we're gonna to be in a firefight today. You, know, you just knew it. There was, there was no leaving the wire and not, not getting shot at. You know, the anxiety part of it, that's, that's something you just have to live with every day. It's, you know, you leave the wire, IED, RKG, sniper, it's, it's a, you never know. You never know, and then that's where the anxiety comes from, is never knowing. Uh, so at this point, we're about a month out from leaving, and you know, we've been through you know, countless firefights at this point and everything, and um, we go out on patrol, you know, we get the ICOM chatter that you know, they see us, they're about to set up an ambush, so we take over a little compound, um, and all the compounds over there are all, are all made out of mud and stone. And um, so I set up my spot on top of the on top of the corner of the mud hut there with a little lip on it, uh, so I got a little bit of protection. And uh, that little corner of the mud hut I was on at the time, I guess with, you know, my big self, all my weight, plus the machine gun and all those rounds, the corner of it gave way and collapsed. So I fell about eight foot right onto my right shoulder. Sean essentially destroyed his shoulder. And after two surgeries, he was medically discharged from the military. The, the day I signed out of the military, it was kind of a bittersweet moment. Um, you know, you always talk about, you know, I can't wait to get out, can't wait to get out. And then when you're finally out, you know, you know, you, you know you're not gonna have your buddies there with you every day to talk to and BS with. Um, you're going back to a town where you really don't know anybody anymore. You've been gone almost 10 years at this point. And, you know, it's pretty much, I gotta start my life all over again. About six months after I got out, I was in that spot and I was withdrawn. Um, I started withdrawing, you know, away from my wife, away from my kid. I was, you know, I was just never talk. I'd never sleep. I'd stay up all night in front of a TV. And it got bad and over the next year and a half after that. And then it progressively got worse, you know, with with the nightmares. You're always, you know, rethinking firefights um, and stuff like that. It's always, always rolling in the back of your head from that kind of thing. But you know, I had, I had a family at the time. I had the kids or my kid, and it was one of those things where you know in the back of your head, you know, they don't want to deal with this stuff. They don't want to hear about it. So you just, you got to bury it. You got to, you got to stuff it way down there, you know. Um, you know, that's the reason that you join and you go and fight and all that stuff, so they don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. So that's one of those things where you got to, I say you got to, you feel like, you feel like that's something you need to handle on your own time. You need to, you need to take that stuff and not let anybody see it. And after a while, you know, you keep burying stuff, eventually that grave's gonna get full. It got real bad, and, um, and my wife ended up leaving me, which, you know, can't say I blame her at that point. You know, it is what it is. And, um, you know, I, was, I wasn't a very nice person at that point in my life. I got divorced, everything was final. And, and I didn't really know what to do, where I was going in life. And at that point in time, I felt like, you know, uh, this is, this, this can't be how I'm gonna live the rest of my life. I'm barely getting by. Um, and one night I, I sat there and I had uh, my pain pills from a surgery and I, I swallowed about 12 of them I had left in the bottle. VET Service Dogs seeks to teach each veteran and dog how to create an everlasting bond and mutual respect of each other's ability. 
What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time too. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. If you're a U.S. military veteran looking for the fishing experience of a lifetime, nice fish. join me, Jay Garstecki, and the Operation Fishing Freedom team as we travel to Temple Bay Lodge on beautiful Eagle Lake in Ontario, Canada. Oh, monstrous one. <laughs> the dates are September 5th through the 12th, 2020. If you'd like more information, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the Take Me to Canada button. J-Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. It's a national junk removal company that franchises exclusively to vets. The Jeep turned into a Hummer, the Hummer turned into a wrap, the wrap turned into a dog. Before you know it, I'm going to the VA hospital and I'm, I'm hiring veterans. And I'm like, man, this feels really good. It's respect, integrity, and trust. And when you have a veteran that you know their work ethic, you know what they've been trained to do, you put them in our system, it's, it's a perfect match. So the goal for us is get the unemployment rate under 1% for veterans. We're on our way. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by SKB Cases, Power Pole, and by Temple Bay Lodge. And one night I, I sat there and I had uh, my pain pills from a surgery, and I, I swallowed about 12 of them I had left in the bottle. And I went to sleep. I woke up about 14 hours later, and covered in my own vomit and everything everywhere. And that was really the point in my life where it's like, what are you doing? Um, I had about 12 missed phone calls. Because two of the missed phone calls I had was Bree trying to call me before she went to school. And that was kind of my thing where it's like, you know, what in the world was I doing? What was I thinking? And, you know, the first thing that popped into my head was, you know, her last memory would be just missed phone calls to her dad. You know, and that's how, that's how her dad went out. And it wasn't a great feeling. Um, while I was a squad leader over in um, Texas, you know, there was twice over there I had two of my privates. Uh, one of them, I had to go in his house, take the shotgun out of his hands, and, and take him to the hospital. Uh, he'd gotten that bad. Um, and there was another guy. I drove to the bar he was at, picked him up, took him back to my house, and you know, I hate to say it, but I kind of had to slap the crap out of him. You know, he was he was overthinking certain situations and and not understanding the full outcome of what what he was planning on doing. I mean, it's, that's still something I'm ashamed of to this day that, you know, I even tried that route. But at that point, you know, I'm like, all right, you know, those guys I've helped before, I, I need to help myself now. You know, my kid was really my life saving in the long run. Because if it wouldn't have been for her and me finally realizing, like, hey, you know, if you want to be in your kid's life at all, you better tighten up.
and um, and I did. So I started looking at other different methods of things, and you know, a service dog was one of them. You know, I'm like maybe that'll help with the sleep and you know the anxiety. Why not actually go out, and hang out with people, and meet more people, and have something else to do besides just sit here and think about everything all day. It's amazing that the folks at VET Service Dogs found you a dog as intent on fishing as you are. Oh, um, he loves it. He might love it a little bit more than I do. Everywhere I go, he goes. And he's really, you know, he's made a big difference. You know, for me being able to go out um, to like my daughter's events at her school or plays and stuff like that, it's um, just having him there gives me that little bit of extra comfort. You know, it's almost like having a battle buddy again. Uh, he wakes me up out of nightmares. Uh, I don't know how he senses it or how he can tell or maybe I talk in my sleep when I do that kind of thing. And he's not, this, he's not the service dog that you see in the commercials or the movies that comes up and licks your face till you wake up. No, he will dang near knock me out of the bed. He comes four paws in the air, 60 miles an hour, and he's gonna wake me up right now. And I realized, you know, when I'm out in the water fishing, oh, yeah. you know, besides being with my kid, that's what makes me the happiest thing in the world. Like, there's no stress. Everything, like, lifts off your shoulders. You're out here. That's a real nice one, man. There's no music, nobody yelling, not a crowd. It's just, you know, it's you, your buddy in the water. You know that we talk about the service dogs and, and VET service dogs and, and organizations like ours and this show and so many other organizations out here that are behind you guys every chance we, we get. We're, we're glad you're here and you appearing with us and telling your story and talking about Gunner will, will save lives. And we're really, really honored to be able to share your story. And we just got a little token we'd like to give you just to welcome you to our team and say thank you. We have this beautiful custom built by Angry Bear Custom St. Croix Rod. It says right there, handcrafted for Sean Brewer in appreciation of your service and sacrifice. Our logo, the logos of the service, and of course the POWMIA flag there. We'd like to give you that. Oh wow, I appreciate it. And then of course we gotta have your very own Sean Brewer <laughs> official take a vet fishing jersey. That's awesome. We're gonna have to get a patch for Gunner's <laughs> vest there so he can be part of the team too, but I can't tell you how much it means for you to come out here and for you to tell us your story and how much it's gonna mean to people to hear it. So I appreciate thank you very much. Me. Thank you very, very much for thank everything you. you've done. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com.